Hey everyone, this is Joe. I'm the Digital Astronomer. Thank you for tuning into my channel today. Tonight I'm going to try to image Messier 106. This is one of my favorite galaxies. You can see I've got the Celestron 8-inch telescope set up, ZWO 533 camera, and then in the filter drawer tonight I've got the Optolong L-Pro um, light pollution filter. I tried to come out the other night on Friday night and try to image ended up uh, having a USB problem and uh, the, the uh, extension cable on my USB hub uh, went bad and um, it took me forever to figure that out. I've got, uh, luckily I try to keep on hand a couple of extra long um, USB extension cords and I had one so I've got that plugged up. I'll have to probably pick up another one uh, but I got everything I think ready and set up. As soon as it gets dark I'll be ready to image. Let's go in, let's talk a little bit about this galaxy and then we'll get started on imaging it. Okay, uh, let's take just a minute here and I'll show you in Stellarium where M106 is located. You can <coughs> see here, I'm looking uh, towards the north. This is uh, Ursa Major right here. I'm actually looking more towards the northeast, uh, I guess, really. Uh, here is Ursa Major. Here is the very small, just two-star uh, constellation of Canis Venetaci. And MAM-106 is located just kind of right between these two. If I zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see this is what the framing is going to look like. Uh, that I've got set up and uh, let's go over and take a look I'll show you the images here I ended up capturing uh, four hours worth of data now before I show you that let me go over to uh, Astro Bin here this was a image of M M106 that I took about two years ago with my Orion ED80T and the ZWO183 camera and uh, this is shot, of course, with a much shorter focal length. And so you can see I'm getting a wider uh, view here. We're only going to be able to capture just a little bit of this. We're not going to get these two small galaxies, nor are we going to get this larger galaxy in this, the, this year's picture. But I'm going to get a little bit up, more up close and personal with it. So I just wanted to show you that. That was uh, what I did a couple years ago. Uh, this year I shot four hours worth of data. When I stacked it in uh, Astro Pixel Processor, this is what it looked like. So overall, it looked pretty good. I continue to be impressed with uh, the ZWO533. You can see this is not really a very long exposure, uh, you know, integration time, four hours. And there's not a lot of noise in it. I'm overall pretty happy with that. I think another two hours or three hours would have improved it some. But overall, if you're shooting on a, a limited time budget, uh, like I am, uh, the 533 works really, really good for you. All right, so I uh, cropped it. And I'll just show you what it looked like when I cropped it. All right, so there's the crop. Uh, I went ahead and did a, a light pollution and background correction. And got this one. Then I went ahead and did a star calibration and got this, okay? From here, I just saved it as a TIFF file and took it over to Photoshop. From Photoshop, uh, all I've really done here as far as processing is really pretty light stuff. Uh, I ran Hostile Beast to green. You see there's a little bit of a green tint in here, a little bit of green noise, uh, which is common when you're using a one-shot camera. And uh, so I took that out. With uh, Hostile Vista Green, that was just set on the medium setting, by the way. Um, and then I went and ran uh, a couple uh, iterations over here in Astronomy Tools. Uh, this is a little add-on uh, plug-in that I've, I've got uh, that you can uh, just search for Astronomy Tools version 1.6.2, and uh, you'll find it on the Internet. It's a free download, and uh, I ran it a couple of times, those actions reduced the star size just a little bit, and then went over and did a little bit of an increase in the star color, and this is what I got. Now, I probably could go into uh, 
Photoshop here into, uh, you know, Camera Raw and do some other adjustments if I wanted to. But overall, I was pretty happy with that um, setup and uh, that picture. So that's M106. What I do want to do for, for a minute here is I want to go over and I'm going to show you some lunar images that I recently took that I'm really happy about. I guess today is more about showing off than teaching, um, but um, let me show you some images that I captured um, not long ago. This is with the same uh, Celestron 8-inch telescope with the .630 focal reducer. But I shot these with my ZWO 224. And I'm just going to show you how they came out. Just to give you an idea here, this is one of the AVI or SER files that I shot. This is about um, somewhere around 5,000 frames that I shot um, here. And you can see I'm looking at the northern part of the moon here. And uh, when I stacked these, let me show you what I came up with. This is the uh, final stacked and processed image. I was really happy with that. A lot of nice clarity in there, a lot of detail uh, here inside of the uh, uh, craters. Uh, I did this as a, uh, instead of turning it into a monochrome, I did do it as a color image. And um, so you can kind of see this. You see some of these little cliffs and ridges that are running down through here on the lunar surface. Um, we'll go over and look at a couple of more. Um, here is another one that I did of kind of the same region. Uh, same region, just a little bit different processing. Move the camera just slightly. Um, I'll go down here and I'll show you a few. Uh, others that I captured. <clears throat> Here's another area. Again, a little bit of noise in this picture. I probably maybe over-processed this just a tiny bit. But again, uh, <clears throat> nice. Uh, the ZW224 is an incredible camera for lunar imaging. I am really happy with it. It's, a, it's really made as a planetary imager. Uh, does really well. I should add, um, if you're doing that, with anything like uh, planetary imaging or, or lunar imaging with the 224, they do suggest that you use an IR filter, IR cut filter, and I use that. It's the one made by ZWO, and it helps uh, a little bit, I think. Um, let me show you a couple other ones. Let's go down here. I'm just kind of randomly picking these. This is one that I was pretty interested in. <clears throat> what I did with this was I, uh, I defined a region of air uh, of interest uh, much smaller uh, and, uh, and, and took, uh, I think this one was made up of about 10,000 frames. But then what I ended up doing was I, uh, I uh, drizzled this in Astro st uh, Stackard uh, three times and that made the picture bigger and kind of gave me a little bit more of a close-up here. I love these... Um, valleys that are running down through here. You can see this is kind of a crack that's running down through the moon. There's a technical name for that. We're going to call it a crack. And um, But uh, you can see here, you just kind of see how scarred up the lunar surface is and, and just fascinating. Uh, if you're getting started in astrophotography, this is where you want to start with the moon. Um, it does a really good job. I didn't finish that one. I didn't, I didn't do that one yet. Here's one um, from some very well-known uh, craters right here. Again, maybe a little bit on the noisy side here. I'm not sure I'm really happy with that picture, but I did I did quite a few uh, pictures of that same area. And uh, so you can see that. So let's see what else we got here. This is of the southern region of the moon. This may show the best clarity of any of these pictures. But I don't know. I want to show you those because I had uh, I had taken these probably about a month and a half ago or so, and uh, I've been processing them along a little bit at a time and kind of reprocessing them. And I wanted to show you uh, uh, what they look like. Uh, but uh, again, uh, lunar imaging. Uh, look at it. this. Always amazes me how many little tiny craters there are on the lunar surface, especially in this southern region of the moon. Man, just a, so many things to look at. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, I didn't do this one so much as a learning uh, curve, but just wanted to show you a couple of the pictures that I'm taking. Again, uh, I'm still, every time I take the ZWO 533 out, I'm more and more impressed with it. Um, this is just four hours of imaging, and uh, you can't beat that. I'll be honest with you. That is just a, um, 
really came out well. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't take a better picture than this. I'm talking about the camera. Four hours of imaging uh, integration and to get a picture that good with one of my limited skills, um, somebody who really knew what they were doing really could do a lot with this camera. So um, just take a look at it. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section, uh, and I'll see you again here in a week or two. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please help support me by clicking on thumbs up and share. Thank you.